chapter one, lesson four is our first piece of combinations. Okay, uh, we'll do both pieces today, but I'll put them in separate videos. Um, so part one is a part of grade 12 English course. Students are required to read the following three books a three in a three month period. The Grapes of Wrath, The Wars, and The Bean Tree. Okay, so due to previous late returns, Steve is only allowed to sign out one English book from the school library per month. So list all different orders in which Steve could sign out three books. So we can just use the letters like G, W, and B. So you have G, W, B, uh, G, B, W, B, G, w, uh, w, B, W, G. And then you have the last one would be W, B, G, W, G. So again, it's that set of six that we're familiar with. I talked about the other day with cat and whatnot. Okay. Krieg is allowed to sign out all three books at the same time. How many different ways can he sign out all three books at the same time? Well, it's kind of silly. Just all, it doesn't matter the order. He's taking all three of them. So one way. Okay. That's kind of the illustration of permutation versus combination. So Steve, the order mattered because he had a restriction. Tariq can just take them all, so there really doesn't matter how he gets all three. He gets all three. Okay. So, so we're going to kind of emphasis today is the combination piece. So we're kind of looking at examples like Tariq more. Okay. So a selection of a set of elements in which the order of the selection is not important is called a combination. Okay. So let's look at this example, <coughs> or kind of continuing the same example. Suppose a student in part one were required to read only two of the books. Complete the table, show the number of ways in which Steve and Tariq could do this. So um, only two books, so complete the table. So if we're doing permutation Steve, so he's only doing two books. So that means we're just, we can just do letters though. You don't have to do the whole thing. I'm just gonna use letters, so I'll just do W and B, B and G and then B and W. Okay. And so the idea is that the Tariq, the combination of Grapes of Wrath and the Wars, and then you have uh, Grapes of Wrath and the Bean Trees, and you have Bean Trees and the Wars. So these are the, there's only three combinations of two. And if you do them, like, and you intermix them, so like here's WB, okay, and I have BW. That is one combination. Like that's being double counted in Tariq's situation because the order doesn't matter. But the order does matter for Steve because of restriction on when he can check things out. Does that make sense? So the combination BW, uh, that means that BW and WB are within this, okay? G and uh, B combination, the same thing as BG and GB for the per permutation. So the combination, the order of these doesn't matter. And here we count for both orders. Okay, so that's just kind of we're going with combinations some more. All right, so complete the following say the number of combinations equal to the number of permutations divided by, so six to three, two. Okay, or factorial, two factorial. Two factorial and two the same thing. All right, so permutation is arrangement of elements in which the order of the arrangement is taken into account. A combination is a selection of elements in which the order of selection is not taken into account. So again, they said it three times to you now, trying to get the verbiage to you about how to understand the difference. Okay. All right, another little different example here. Five students, Al, Byron, Colin, Dave, and Eric, take part in a cross-country race for evidence their school. So the winner of the race gets fifty dollars. Runner-up gets twenty-five, and the third place gets ten. The table below shows all possible ways the three pr uh, prizes could be awarded to five participants. A stands for A one, B stands for Byron. Oh, sorry, Al. B stands for Byron. A one. Byron. C stands for Colin. D stands for Dave, and E stands for Eric. So these are all the possible ways they can finish top three. Is this a list of example of permutations or combination? It's a permutation. What spe specifically makes it a permutation? first, second, third, and the different money, right? So first, second, third has different prizes. So A being here matters compared to A being here. Okay, so yes. This is a perm. So 
confirm. All right. And then how many ways are there to award three prizes? So you can go count all these if you want, but it's, since it's a permutation, you simply can just go, what are we looking at? How many people are racing? Are we, are we tracking? Five people, three, right? How many ways can I pick three people out of five? If you count them or if you do that, you're going to get 60 ways in which they can finish. Okay, and now you're going to see this is a really good page to illustrate the difference between the two. Now, they're all not always as straightforward, but it's a very good foundational way of looking at the two. So, obviously, a spoiler here. Now we're going to change it to a combination. So participating in the cross-country race, the school has been awarded three places at the running clinic. The school coach decided to select three lucky students from each of the ones who took part in the cross-country race. Use table from below, which is duplicated from above. So how would this change? So what happens is, see, all, see this column here? This column is all ABCs. The, in this context, these all mean the same thing because they're all selected for the running clinic. Right? It's the same outcome. Does that make sense? So that's how you group a combination from a permutation. So typically combinations will have less amount than permutations because the order isn't important. So I don't care if it's A, B, C, B, A, C, B, C, A because Al was a Colin and what was the B guy again? Byron? Okay? They're coming. It doesn't matter which order they're going. They're all three going. Okay? So these, your answer for the combination is 10. There's 10 ways to take three people to the clinic. Okay, this is a combination. So you would do, same. it's in the same spot in your calculator. You would do, um, sorry, it's 5C3. Okay, and 5C3 gets you the 10 that I just counted out for you. And again, we'll complete the following statement. So the number of combinations equal to the number of permutations divided by, so what was divided by this time? So we went from 60 by 6, right? Or what was that as a factorial? 3 factorial. So what's the difference? The last one we selected two books, right? And so it was 2 factorial. This time we have three people selected, it's 3 factorial. Okay, so if we're selecting four people, five people would be 5, 5 factorial. So what happens is if you're selecting more people, it's going to make your total less, right? Because you're dividing out a bigger number of things that could repeat. Okay. All right. So here is the actual uh, combination formula. So you can see what's different. It's the same exact formula as we have for perms, but the R factorial. That's what we're talking about, the number of choice. The, five, the three people in the race, the two people in the books. That's the only difference in the formula. Why do you know this formula? What because your calculator does it? Because they will put that formula and ask you to solve algebraically like we've been doing, okay, on the diploma. Okay, that was I've seen that two out of three times so far you've had to solve using the formula. Okay? So don't ignore the formula because you know it's a good calculator. You do know how to set it up. Okay, these are two subscripts right here of combinations. So combination should be written like this as well, but NCR is the most common. But if you see this, this means combination. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So I was hoping that you guys see that th this is what makes it smaller total. You divide out the, the orders. Okay, all right, let's take a look here. Three students from a class of 10 are being chosen to go on a school trip. How many ways can they be selected? Write the answer to factorial notation and evaluate. So they want you to write in factorial notation. So we know, three students, we know it's going to be 10 to 3. But if I write factorial notation, that means we're doing. 10 factorial over 7 factorial, 3 factorial. Where does that come from? Well, this is n, and then it's n minus r, and then it's r. 10 minus 3 is 7, 3 factorial. Okay, so either way, when you do this, it's 120. 120 ways.
Okay, so then kind of shows you how hard it is for the lottery, which a lot of you guys know the lottery is difficult. <laughs> but to win the lotto, 649, a person must correctly select six numbers, 1 to 49. Jasper selected the six numbers from the birth dates of his family, 3, 7, 9, 11, 20, and 29. How many different selective numbers could have he made? Could he made? Um, just, just so you know, the reason order doesn't matter in the lottery is because when you buy a lottery ticket, they always go in sequential. So it doesn't matter where the number's at. If the number comes up, you hit it. It doesn't matter where your number is, if that makes any sense. Okay, so like if I have eight that's in my third spot, like if eight was here, but when they drew numbers, eight was the second spot, I still hit the eight. I'm just not going to hit all of them. Okay, so lottery, they just do it sequentially. So that's why the order doesn't matter. So if I do that, I have 49 numbers to choose. How many? Six. So 49C, whoops, six, not three. C, six. Or if I do the factorial, be 49 factorial over 43 factorial, six factorial. That would be your total ways. And so if you calculate that, you get a very difficult 13.9 million, 382,000, and 816. So if that, that means if you're not an odds person, you buy one lottery ticket, at Petro Station, you have one in 13, almost 14 million chance. Not great. Okay, <laughs> not great. Okay. If I buy two, two and thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, going on here, Athletic Council decides. This kind of the subcommittee thing is something I often see in terms of verbiage on the diploma as well. And I just apologize now. I whenever I Remember, thanks for Paul. I will just say it. So if you think that's all I'm talking about, I think I remember it. Um, but the athletic council decides to form a subcommittee of seven council members to look at how funds raised should be spent on sports activity in the school. There are a total of 15 athletic council members, nine males, six females. The subcommittee from that athletic council must consist of exactly three females. Okay. So determine the number of ways of selecting the females. So how do we select three females? How would we do that? Right, 6C3, because your females has to come from your female pool. Okay, that's the different ways you can choose the females. So six females, choose three of them. How many different ways can I choose three of that group? Okay. The males. So if we have to have exactly three females, then how many males are going to be on? Four. So then we're going 9C4. Okay, it says seven, uh, right here. Seven council members, it says exactly three females. So we know we're going for three females and four males. Okay, sorry, these numbers are, this is 20. And 9C4 is 126. So then how many different subcommittees can they have? What would you do? You would multiply those two numbers. Okay, because your number of ways to get females have your number of ways to get males. So you would simply multiply it. So it would be 6C3 times 9C4. If you can put it like that in your calculator with the brackets, it'll work just fine. And if you do that, you should get 1,300 something. 25, or sorry, 2520 something. So 2520 ways to do it. All right, so let's see what you think happens here with B. This is where they start getting wordy. So it says, in how many ways can something be selected? Bruce, the football coach, must be included. So how does that change your selections? What's that? Good, yep. And we need six people now. That's great. Good point. Only eight males. Great. You guys are saying awesome stuff. Good. What else? Three spots now. So exactly. So what changed? Did this change? No, we still have the girls as the same, 633. Three. But our boys, as you guys all pieced together, that was great, is 8C3 now. Because Bruce is already on. So we're only trying to find six members now. Bruce is out of that male population. So that's eight, and we only need three. So great, good job. Okay, and if you calculate that, you would get 1120. Is how many ways if Bruce is automatically on. Okay. Perfect. All right. A lot of people don't like these ones. I do. I like cards, but 
they're not the diploma. So if you don't know cards well, you worry about that being the diploma. They don't put um, playing cards on the diploma. Okay. Uh, so basic, just rundown. If you don't know cards at all, there's four suits in a deck of cards. Each suit is 13 cards. Two suits are black. Two suits are red. And then face cards are considered jack, queen, king. Okay. So that means there's 10 numbered cards. Ace is a one. Okay. And this forward. So. This is going to talk about the poker, just a little bit of poker odds. If you ever play poker, it's kind of interesting to see how hard it is to hit some hands just on a regular five-card deal. But it says, how many different five-card hands are possible? So if I just take a 52-card deck, I, del I uh, dealt out five cards to all of us. Obviously, that's different ways, right? But how many different combinations are possible from the deck? Now, the reason it's a combination is why. Why is it a combination of what I'm explaining? Exactly. If I give you five cards, you can put the king in the front and the back and still have a king. Right? It doesn't matter. Okay? Good. So, this is simply just going to be what then? Good. 52 C5. And you'll see that's a pretty massive number. It is, what is that, 1.5 million I thought it was? Oh, 2.6 million about. So, 2, 5, 9, 8. You guys got it? What is it? 9, 6, 0? Thanks. So basically, you know, every hand, that's how many different hands there are, okay? And so now when you think about what we find with these, you can see how hard it is to get like a full house of three kings and two queens, or to get four of kind aces. You'll see how rare that is, okay? So anyways, it says, um, and how many of the hands will there be all diamonds? So if you get all diamonds, okay, how do you do that? So we're not going to do the probability part, so don't worry about dividing yet. We're just asking how many ways can I get all diamonds? So what's my pool, guys? How many diamonds can I choose? How many? 13. There's 13 diamond cards. And I want to, if I whole hand diamonds, how many do I want? Five. So you just go 13 C5. That's how many ways to get all diamonds. That puts you at 1287. So what happens here, if you put this over that, that's the probability of that happening, which you see is quite small. We're not doing probability for this class. We're just talking about number of ways. So I'm just giving you the kind of concept of a, a flush. It's kind of difficult. All right, four black cards and one red card. So now it's saying black and red. So how many black cards are there? 26. So we're going to go 26 C4 times 26 C1. And you can see this is more common, which makes sense. That's why it's a worthless hand. <laughs> Having four reds and a black doesn't mean anything in poker. Okay. So let's take a shot at specifically how do I get a full house of kings and queens? Or we still have that question in the second one? Lincoln? Don't want to rush you, sorry. Okay, so sure. Three kings and two queens. How do we get that? 4C3, 4C2, yep. And so you see, you're picking from a smaller subset, so you're going to have a small a small value here. Okay, You're going to have a small value of 24. There's only 24 ways to do that. That's not very good in terms of odds. Okay, That's essentially 24. That's like kind of 1 in like 100,000. It's not very good. The 4, because there's 4 kings in a deck. And there's 4, there's four of every card. Just different suits. Yep. Okay, anything else? Okay, so now we are completing five card hands for all these. So if he wants three kings, what's going to change here? So we still have this same guy, right? But what's the other two cards going to be? Forty-eight C two. It does matter. It's something specific. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they are. So you're right, Jaden. But it, it is forty-eight cards that we don't care as long as they're not a king. The reason it's forty-eight, not fifty-two. You have to take the kings out because we can't reselect another king. Okay? Yeah. Three kings because there's still a fourth king that we don't want to get either. Does that make sense? Okay. So he asked a good question. He said, "Why can't? What about the fourth king? Can that leave in? No, because you guys could you could select that if you leave him in, and that makes you have four kings, not three. Okay. So you want to take all the kings out for the second part. Okay. So four aces is the same thing. 
four. Oh, you, sorry, I'll get you the calculation. So for it's C4, so it's 48 C1 here. So you'll see how rare that is. So the three kings, sorry, the three kings is 4, 5, 1, 2. It's 4, 5, 1, 2 here. And for four aces, which is quite rare, is 48. There's only 48 ways to get four aces. Let's see, I'll test some probability question here. Why is there more, is a, was there more ways to get four aces than part three? Because four aces is a better hand. Why? Okay. Right. Okay, no, that makes sense. Except for, my question is, in poker, what wins? You guys know? Four aces wins. But why is there more chances for four aces than three kings and two queens? I'm trying to see if you can understand that. Right. You're essentially you're saying it. So the combinations of full houses, there's more combinations of full houses than straight four of a kind. Four of a kind, there's only 13 types of cards. You can only have 13 times this for four of a kinds. For full houses, how many combinations of full houses can you have? So it's how many different th pairs of threes and twos can you have? There's a lot, okay? Because I can say, I could say three queens and two kings, three aces and two queens. Like there's, there's so many combinations of full houses compared to four of a kind. Four of a kind is straight. Like you were kind of saying, it's straight three, right? So that's why the four of a kind is still worth more. Five cards of the same suit called a flush. So we kind of already did that, right? All diamonds. So that would just be the 13 C5 again. Okay, but it's 13 C5. And they. what's the difference of question one and question, this last question here? Or right, so we just timed this by four. That's how many ways to get a flush. Not just diamonds, all of them. Okay, so you have the diamonds or whatever, the suit. So there's four suits. So that would be 1287. So that ends up being a little bit bigger, 5148. Okay, good.